What's next in the Abraham Accords, I think, twofold. More countries will join. Yeah. Um, I think uh, hopefully they'll get some American support because in all cases, American support is essential. Um, Israel is a very important partner in the Abraham Accords, but so is America and a lot of these countries want to improve their relationships with the United States as well. So we need, a, we need America to engage, to really engage. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. We've got a special clip for you today from the Watchmen TV show on TBN. I was in Washington, D.C. recently for an exclusive sit-down with Ambassador David Friedman. As America's top diplomat in Israel, he presided over several historic events, including the U.S. Embassy move to Jerusalem and the signing of the Abraham Accords, groundbreaking peace agreements between Israel and Arab nations. Although he departed his post when President Trump left office, Ambassador Friedman is continuing to make his voice heard when it comes to the world's most important and strategic region, the Middle East. Take a look. Obviously, the, the benefits of peace with Israel across economic, uh, technological, scientific, financial realms, all great cultural tourism, all common sense, wise moves by UAE, Bahrain, Morocco, Sudan. But can you talk about the Iran factor uh, and the role that Iran Iran probably did not intend this, but the Iranian regime's radical behavior around the region played a role in bringing Israel and its Sunni Arab neighbors closer together. Look, Iran is the largest state sponsor of terrorism. They're the largest threat to the region. Their uh, tentacles extend you know, all along the crescent from you know, Yemen, uh, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. Uh, they've caused death and suffering to millions of people, including their own people. Our approach to Iran was to weaken them. They're dangerous. They're, they're an enemy of the free world. And the weaker they are, um, the, uh, the, the safer the world will be. They're weak right now. Um, we know from 2015 that when you just give them money and welcome them back into the community of nations, they don't modulate their behavior. They spend their money on ballistic missiles. They don't spend their money on hospitals. They don't spend their money on schools. They spend it on ballistic missiles and fomenting terror, and they shout death, death to Israel. And of course, you know, the, the, the premise of the JCPOA, of the Iran deal, was their representation that they have never had military designs on a nuclear weapon. The Mossad came in, walked right into the warehouse, pulled out you know, a warehouse full of archives. That demonstrates this to be a lie, a conclusively, complete lie. It, the, the JCPOA was the product of a fraud. Yes. And all these nations realized it, and they saw in the United States a partner to combat Iran. And obviously, like you say, there are other reasons why these countries coalesced, but this was one of them, and, and I fear that a policy which turns more towards Iran and away from these countries can undo a lot of the good that we did. And the reality is that what I'm seeing across the board is not an attempt by uh, the Biden administration to provide better governance, but rather to just undo whatever Trump did. That's policy number one. If Trump did it, let's undo it. Now, look, I wouldn't expect the Democratic administration to agree with everything that Donald Trump did. And, and you know, I can accept that elections have consequences and that, you know, in a Democratic uh, regime, there are going to be changes that reflect a different policy. And, and maybe those will uh, uh, improve the lives of Americans, and I hope they do. But some of the things that, that we did uh, are, were unquestionably the right call for the benefit of the world, for the benefit of the American people. And I just hope that uh, people give these, uh, these, these, especially these diplomatic initiatives, the respect that they deserve because they're the right things. What comes next as you look out on the horizon? You obviously were intimately involved in these peace negotiations. Saudi Arabia, could they come into the fold? Other Sunni Arab nations, Oman is one nation we've heard. Uh, and secondly, again, could the Iran nuclear deal, if there is a new incarnation of it and the Biden White House seems determined to re-enter the deal, could that bring Israel and the Sunni Arab nations even closer? It could, uh, it could bring them closer. Uh, it could also cause them to retreat to their own corners and yeah. get into an every man for himself kind of mode. Arms race in the Middle East. Yeah, it's, I wouldn't wanna conduct that experiment because some, it could, it's likely to bring, I think, a lot, of, a lot of bad things. What's next in the Abraham Accords, I think, twofold. More countries will join. Yeah. Um, I think 
uh, hopefully they'll get some American support because in all cases, American support is essential. Um, Israel is a very important partner in the Abraham Accords, but so is America and a lot of these countries want to improve their relationships with the United States as well. So we need, a, we need America to engage, to really engage. Um, inside of the countries right now that are parties to the Abraham Accords, there's just enormous potential for just more and more breakthroughs. This past week, Abu Dhabi announced a billion dollar plus investment in an Israeli energy company. Now, who in the world would have thought, you know, even a few years ago, that an Arab nation would be investing in Israeli energy resources. This is just, you know, rivers flowing upstream. You know, <laughs> this is crazy stuff. So I think that, um, I think the potential is enormous. But as I said, it's brand new. And um, it, it needs to be nurtured. It needs to be fertilized and watered. And people of good faith need to just kind of continue to, uh, to work to encourage and to inspire. And, uh, and some of those people need to be inside the government. Folks, I truly believe that God placed Ambassador Friedman in such a pivotal historic role for such a time as this. If you want to watch my entire interview with Ambassador Friedman, just go to the TBN app or visit our website, tbn.org, and check out episode 196 of The Watchman. Thanks so much for joining us. God bless you. And until next time, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.